Okay, well, the last presentation, uh, PCD to VEC, uh, Poison, and I'm very sure that I uh, pronounced that incorrectly. Uh, uh, correction distance-based approach for viral host classification. Classification and efficient way. 
TCD is a measure of difference in uh, amino acid composition between two protein sequences. So the theoretical basis for this distance measure is a Poisson distribution, uh, which models the number of events occurring in a fixed interval of time. So the PCD formula uses the um, uh, concept of observed frequency in the uh, observed frequency of the k merge string substring in a sequence and expected frequency. And later we use these two values to uh, correlate and find the Poisson distribution. Uh, this distance is a good measure because it takes into account both observed as, as well as expected frequency of each amino acid and it has a extra advantages on the mathematical side as well because uh, I will explain it later that how it is uh, justifying and proving the theoretical foundation of this paper. So uh, there has been several work done before uh, to start with on the machine learning front we had a one point encoding. Uh, which is the simplest solution to think about converting the amino acid to the numerical form to supply it to the machine learning algorithms. But uh, this is not durable because we have several large unique amino acids, maybe like 20 unique amino acids. So making a one part feature vector is very expensive. It increases the dimensionality drastically. The other approach, which was a traditional approach, is phylogenetic approach that I mentioned, but again, it is very computationally um, expensive and not affordable. And then there has been work done on KML based method, which is a substring KML count, and we just take that what is the pattern of amino acid coming on the genomic sequencing um, as it is advancing. So we took into that account. So this is the, our proposed system. So what we are doing um, is on the left side you can see, uh, probably this side you can see there is a two sequences that we are trying to find. So this is a demonstration with two sequences, but obviously it grows with n number of sequences. So we get the uh, observed frequency. We count the frequency count for these uh, these KMS window, which is k equal to three, I believe, on this experiment. Uh, so we, obviously we found the observed frequency and then this is the proposed uh, substantial concrete, uh, contribution that we are doing and we are getting an expected frequency out of the observed frequency and then we compute the distance. So this Poisson correlation distance, uh, we get the distance matrix between n sequences in between and then we apply the RBF kernel. So the reason behind uh, applying the kernel is we wanted a kernel out of this distance matrix because you cannot apply any other than KML algorithm on this distance matrix. But we, if we have a kernel matrix, then we will be able to apply other algorithms and it will be uh, embedding which will be generated and available for DSME and visualization and other classification algorithms as well. So we apply RBF kernel to get the kernel matrix and then we apply kernel PCA to reduce the dimensionality of uh, this kernel matrix and perform the classification on this. So this is the algorithm, it's available on the paper also, as I've explained. Uh, this is the major part where we are having the expected frequency um, and the observed frequency that we are using and then applying RBF kernel and kernel PCA to reduce the dimensionality. So I'll just skip the algorithm and then uh, talk about like why and how these RBF kernel is helping. So since uh, we have our distance matrix and uh, uh, we can prove uh, after applying the RBF kernel, having a kernel matrix, these are the properties which are um, which comes along with a kernel matrix, like triangular a uh, triangle inequality. The triangle inequality property ensures that the distance between two points by a third point is always equal to or greater than the direct distance between the two points. So this property can be justified only if we have applied um, the kernel and we have a kernel matrix out of a distance matrix. So symmetry is also another property which is uh, being proven if we have a kernel matrix. Um, it ensures that the two points are same regardless of um, in whatever order they are to be considered as a distance to be measured uh, in the kernel matrix. And the non-negativity property ensures that the distance between the two points is always non-negative, uh, which is obviously because it cannot be a negative distance between two points. The other reason uh, uh, that the kernel 
earlier kernel provides is if you imagine it in a simpler way uh, a two dimensional plane the two classes for example uh, a cat and a human they might have a very similar sars cov genomic sequence so if you imagine the cluster in two dimensional uh, plane you can see that it, they are overlapping there might be close points as well but as soon as you go on the uh, earlier kernel on the kernel matrix uh, when you go on the higher dimensional vision you can imagine that these uh, clusters are segregated segregated and separated uh, and are quite clear so that also helps uh, to get the rdf okay so i was here so our contribution in this paper is uh, the efficient prediction by doing using the pcd to wipe we are getting efficient prediction we are uh, incorporating the biological knowledge um, we are getting the more frequency uh, the k counts in our vector we are using the rbf kernel as i mentioned that into the higher dimensional space when you visualize we can uh, cluster and we can find the close points more segregated in a better way we are using kernel pca to reduce the dimensionality and then we have a theoretical proof for these three properties which should back our theory mathematically so the data set was used in this experiment uh, was of 2500 sequences these are the distribution for the host we have human swine chicken camel bat cat uh, and uh, pangolin and duck these are the distribution for the data uh, for which we have used and the host is the class label that we are trying to predict through the model model and for classification the experiment we use the several uh, classifiers including svn um, nile bayes and uh, material perceptron kms neighbor random forest and logistic regression uh, we have conducted extensive experiments for this to back up so we did perform uh, we performed experiment with one hot encoding one hot encoding with pca we did the ridge regression lasso regression auto encoder uh, we tested it in the one pair combining as well um, considering like in hyper hyperbolic space it might give some different results so we wanted to test that too we used the string kernel and the protein bird uh, model as well so uh, with the result we can see that pcd to wac is outperforming uh, all the feature engineering based methods including one hot encoding lasso pc and regression and uh, the neural network based method as well which are uh, auto encoder methods string kernels uh, and even the point care if you see the point care results are also not well, uh, very good as compared to what we are proposing protein bird has uh, good results uh, of 92% around accuracy but uh, again 92 is still far behind than 97% which we are getting with the random forest even the uh, our distance uh, proposed distance matrix uh, methodology so to conclude in this paper we presented a novel method for predicting the host specificity of uh, coronavirus by analyzing spike protein sequence our method involves the use of poisson uh, cor uh, correction distance we are correcting the distance and radio based function kernel uh, and we are applying the kernel pca to reduce to the low dimensional embeddings of the spike sequence in future we will focus on refining the improving our method to test it on a larger data set as we see the data set used was very small and we want to test it on a diverse data set for other viruses also so we'll be looking forward to work continuously on this one further uh, since i am not the author i might not be able to answer all the question but if you feel like i'm not answering all the questions you can contact the first author uh, he's the main author of the paper we'll be happy to answer you all uh, that's it i guess uh, i'll be happy to answer if you have any questions Any questions? So I've got a few questions. Yes, sir. Sure. <clears throat> I, I think you you have a very good understanding of the paper, and you should be you should be consider they should consider you as a co-author of this paper. So that's my number one comment. 
So I have a, so let me see if I understand this correctly. So you take the protein sequences and you try to basically uh, tell which which is like the, the which host is it? Uh, yes. From from just from the protein sequence, right? Yes. And the main the novelty of the paper is is to come up with the proper encoding of these sequences. Right? Yes, exactly. So we have a spike uh, region of the spike protein whole protein. genome sequence, SARS-CoV-2, okay. uh, and we have a labeled host. Okay. And we are trying to uh, predict those hosts. So it's a supervised learning for okay. now. Uh, just keep, yeah. Um, could you go back to where, where you showed the data set? So I can see that there's a huge class imbalance. Have you guys thought about that? Because you can see from the data set that there are like a human like a human sequence is around nine. I mean, I understand. I mean, in nature, I mean, we cannot change that. But did you guys ever like uh, because you know you see cat only fifty seven sequences while humans there are nine fifty seven. Do so, I understand it that correctly? Yeah, you are right. Uh, the data is like imbalanced because of the uh, necessity okay. of the environment. Like right now, we are prioritizing humans. Now we have ten million plus sequences. But um, yeah, I understand. So we thought about like this that there could be a class imbalance which might be causing an issue. So in other words, we are doing it. We did the smart uh, like synthetic so data. Class imbalance. Yeah. So we have been working on this data set extensively on other papers also. So we have considered that too. Okay. But this was like uh, just specific to poison correlation distance, the correction distance that we wanted to test the theory. So we thought that smart data set would work too. Okay. Um, thank you. So another question is, uh, so you look, you're looking at the sequences, right? Do you have access to the protein structure for these sequences or not? Uh, so yes, so the, that's what we have used. So if the you go... Structure or the sequence? The sequence. The sequence. Yeah. The structure is also available, uh, I'm not sure, but uh, the 3D structure of the data is also available. It's on... Um, have you ever thought of doing classification from the 3D structure of protein? Yeah, this is another work that we have been working <laughs> on with a smile string that okay. comes under the drug discovery part. Okay. Uh, this was more on mathematical side of finding like whether the embedding will work or not. So we just presented this one. But yeah. we are cur currently working on the 3D structure protein folding uh, to do the classification okay. based on uh, that. Alpha, alpha, alpha fold and... Sorry? Alpha fold? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any more questions? All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.